In this lecture, I'd like to focus on uh, taking some of the things we just talked about in terms of the challenges of working with nonlinear models and think about how do we combine uh, you know, the advantages of working with nonlinear models when they make sense to describe a process uh, with uh, the idea of hierarchical models. And as a reminder, hierarchical models are, are models that ultimately are trying to model uh, the variability in the parameters within a model. So when we learned about uh, hierarchical models in a simple linear model case, we often were simply just adding on a random effect uh, on the end of a model. Uh, when you're dealing with nonlinear models, it can often take more thought uh, to decide uh, which parameters you consider random and which are, are considered fixed. Um, and if you set all the parameters in a, in a nonlinear model to random, uh, the result can often be uh, unidentifiability or just you know, a, la a lack of effective sample size, a lack of power uh, to be able to estimate parameters. Sometimes you, so you know, make that clear, sometimes when you add the random effects, uh, they're truly unidentifiable. And sometimes in theory, they're unidentifiable uh, but you you lack the the sample size, lack the power to actually estimate them. Uh, the addition of covariates can also be challenging. So we learned in the uh, allometries model about how uh, when we added ra these random effects in a um, hierarchical linear model, you know we then moved on to asking questions about what covariates might we add at that hierarchical level to explain the variability. Uh, in, in the parameters. So when you have nonlinear models, you know, how, you know, those nonlinear relationships on how, uh, how to explain the variability in parameters can be challenging to write down. Uh, actually, before I move on to this slide, I also want to point out that, that some of these problems actually happen with uh, linear models as well. So even if you're dealing with a, a linear model that might be a, you know, multiple regression model, if you have five or six, seven different X's, you know, you might also have the same challenge of deciding, you know, which of those, you know, seven or eight different slopes uh, you might consider to be random and which of those slopes uh, should be treated as fixed. Uh, so for as a first example, and thinking about how to uh, combine uh, hierarchical models with, uh, combine hierarchical models with nonlinear models. We're going to use an example of, of reproduction, at reproductive effort from co coho salmon in the Pacific Northwest. And we're going to do this using a very common uh, population model that re to represent the, the, the density dependence and the relationship between uh, the number of spawning individuals, S, and the number of recruits. So S, T is the, the number of spawners at a particular point in time, RT is the number of recruits. Uh, and, and these, the, the number of recruits depends nonlinearly, uh, depending on this, this parameter, these two parameters, alpha and RM. Uh, and here we're also uh, assuming a multiplicative uh, log normal error. Um, in practice, uh, this data set from the Pacific Northwest had uh, data from multiple streams where the reproductive output varied by stream. So the question would be, how do we incorporate uh, this random stream effect into this nonlinear model? Uh, so there's a few alternatives for how we might do that. Um, one option would be to uh, put the random effect on the alpha. Another would be to put it on this RM parameter. A third option would be to put it on the alpha and the RM. Uh, another option would be just to add it as, a, as an additive random effect uh, on the error at the uh, same as we were doing with our, our linear models. Or you know, we could combine any, that additive random effect with any of these other random effects. Uh, for this case study, we're going to focus on this third example where we actually are going to put uh, a hierarchical variability on both alpha and RM. So we're going to allow uh, stream to stream variability in both of these parameters. So this gives us this overall model. 
So we have our process model between recruits and spawners. We have uh, a data model where we're assuming the errors are, the, the log normal errors are, uh, ex, you know, the, the exponent of the errors are normally distributed or in other ways assuming log normal error uh, with uh, zero bias and some uh, sigma square. Uh, we then have these two parameters that are allowing to vary, and so they need uh, parameter models. And so now, if we're looking at, uh, you know, the recruits in stream i at time t, we might have alpha that varies by stream i and rn that varies by stream i. And so we have the stream level parameter models describing how rm and alpha have some overall means, mu r and alpha r, and some variability, tau r and tau alpha. So now we end up needing to uh, put priors on these parameters. So we have uh, priors on mu r and mu alpha and tau r and tau alpha. So these are the cross stream means and the cross stream variances. This figure shows the uh, results of fitting this data to uh, these uh, different streams in the Northwest uh, hierarchically. And actually, it's worth noting that the, we can actually contrast the hierarchical effect model fits uh, with dashed lines uh, compared to the model fits if we fit each stream independently. And we can see that in some cases, those fits, uh, whether we do those fits hierarchically or we do them stream by stream, we can get very uh, similar parameters like we do in this Big Beef Creek uh, example, but this next example right next to it, this Bingham Creek, is an example where uh, when we fit this stream by itself, we get parameters that don't really make sense biologically. There's a kind of a fixed output uh, of, of recruits almost independent of the amount of spawning. Uh, it's just a constant mean. By contrast, when we have a, a hierarchical effect, we're able to borrow strength similar to the allometry model and produce um, you know, uh, uh, estimates of, of the curvature and asymptote that is sharing information from the other streams. And, and some of the other streams are somewhat in between where we can see you know, a little bit of effect of that hierarchical model fit and in, in capturing, uh, you know, pulling things towards the more average relationship. And in some cases that pulling towards the the more shared relationship is, is much stronger.